under the banner of diversity, equity, and inclusion, official policies have been embedded that distort the whole purpose of these institutions. Uh oh, it's Braverman! Highly controversial ideas are presented to the workforce and to the public as if they're motherhood and apple pie. Gender ideology, white privilege, anti-British history. If there's one Tory that you could point to and say that they're using cultural war rhetoric to grandstand and gain notoriety, it's Braverman. And the evidence demonstrates that if you don't challenge this poison, things just get worse. I mean, she's even using it to put her in pole position for leader of the Conservatives. But hang on, here's Lee Anderson saying the quiet part out loud. The big thing in, in 2019, there was three things that won us the election. It was nothing to do with me. Uh, it, was, it was Brexit, it was Boris, it was Corbyn. Mm. And it was as simple as that. Those three things together was a great campaign. Mm. Great ingredients. Um, at the next election, we haven't got those three things. So mm. we're going to have to mm. think of something else. It'll probably be a, cult, uh, a mixture of culture wars and trans debate and... He actually admits that the next election will be fought on culture war issues because the Tories have little else to offer. It's a sentiment that Marina Perkis reiterates on the Jacob Rees-Mogg GB News show. But I'm now joined by the political commentator Marina Perkis, who, as I understand it, Marina, you don't think the culture wars really exist? Do you think they're essentially a, a right-wing... Oh, no, I, um, think, I think they exist because people like you and your party in government they desperately need them to exist because what else are you going to win the next election on? So um, they're not coming from people who want to pull roads down or want to edit Raoul Dahl. Isn't mm. there a battle of ideas that is going on that sometimes get expressed in extreme form? So what I think has happened is it's a distraction technique. So don't get me wrong, I think any calls to rewrite Roald Dahl, for example, or to rename a, a street, by the way, the street renaming, if we go into that, it was called Black Boy Lane, you know, that was why they renamed the street. I think that's fair enough. If you had a street named, you know, White Trash, you might want to rename it. But I think what's happening here is you're drawing attention to these things that actually don't impact people's lives. And the reason you're doing that is because otherwise people might just focus on the real grievances in their life, which are basically caused by your government. Finally, as if this all wasn't bad enough, we have Anderson undermining the very idea that individuals such as himself and Braverman claim that we're all living under a tyranny of wokest ideology. Well, I think it's a load of nonsense, Peter. I mean, you stop 100 people in the street in Ashfield or outside here, ask them what white resentment is, they won't know. And quite frankly, if you told them, they wouldn't be bothered. So really, what he's just said here is that most people don't know or care about these woke issues. Click here for a video where Anderson shoots himself, metaphorically in the foot.